my name is Cynthia. I thank you for clicking on this video and if you enjoy beautiful cross stitch patterns and seeing and hearing about my attempts to recreate said patterns then you're in the right place. And I intend to recap the last seven days that I've worked on the Stitch Mania Challenge that's taking place throughout the month of May. I have seven projects that I'd like to share and I also have a gift, a exciting announcement and a reminder at the end of the video so I hope you stick around for that and as I said I'd like to recap what I worked on over the last seven days I left you with um, out starting my day seven start which was um, yeah day seven Christmas elf helper by Barbara Anna designs it's a free pattern online and I did have someone ask on Instagram where to find that so I will link that below um, or to download that I did find that it's still available and it was just a fun whimsical stitch I love her cheeks and the birds I particularly like that bird that's holding packages by its beak with some string so I will get back to this probably in September as I kind of ramp up for my Christmas stitching but it's a lot of fun whimsical colors and I think my kids will enjoy the fun character to go with the elf stuff I already have and to stay with Christmas um, I also worked on a really popular design that's got a lot of love on Instagram. This um, Christmas Rules by Lizzie Kate. My hands are kind of shaking, sorry. And um, I didn't get as much done on it as I'd like, but I was able to fill in more of the top, which had kind of been giving me trouble. It's funny how much my stitching has changed in six months. A lot of these stitches I look at and think, oh boy, I've come a long way. <laughs> but from a distance, it's very cute, so no shame in my game and I put a few letters at the bottom where it says honor traditions and look forward to getting back to that it is a beautiful design very pretty the darker colors that I was using I thought were weeks but it's actually classic color works manor red such a pretty red and also some balsam fur by classic color works and blue spruce by Gentle Arts. So just some really pretty deep um, Christmas colors. Lots of fun to stitch. Um, the other one that was fun to stitch but also just um, a real project. <laughs> I had foolishly or naively thought that I could stitch that tomato on the allotted day which was on the... oh I got something out of order. That's okay. On the 10th. Um, it is over 2,000 stitches of tomato. So as I got into it, I thought, oh dear. Um, and I like to fill in. I don't mind just the solid, you know, straight stitches. It's something you can do while you're watching TV or waiting on a kid's appointment or something. But um, it was more than I expected. And I did swap out. This is what's charted for um, DMC 918, which is a little maybe darker and more prim. Um, for a fabric or for a thread that I found just happened upon called tomato while I was at my LNS trying to fix my Stacy Natch problem which I did by the way I'll tell you more about that at the end of the month but um, this this thread was richer I felt like and had a little bit of variegation so that it was just a little bit more of a um, joy to stitch and I felt like it matched the picture a little better than that darker DMC. We all know this the picture is not a good indicator necessarily of your end result but that is a really cute piece and I am excited to get back to it so didn't make it as far as I hoped but that's okay. On day nine, I'm going out of order a little bit, I worked on Educated by Bent Creek. And I really believed, and if I had just a little more time, I could have possibly met the goal of finishing this in the day that I stitched it. It won't take much longer to finish. I used Sarsaparilla by Gentle Arts to stitch my cat Roxy. She's a tortoise shell. And it was a lot of fun. So this is a fabric that I dyed myself. It was a... Um, scrap of Monaco that I dipped in tan, wadded it up, and then over dyed it with taupe. So really like that. And that's going to be finished um, in kind of a series with the other library pieces that I pick. So I will show you that hopefully by the end. On day, let's see, day 11, back in order, I intended to stitch 
Cricut Collections Autumn. But thankfully, I had a notion that it may not be enough space. I pulled out my tape measure and I was about three inches short on this green fabric that I had dyed, sorry about the glare, for the autumn piece. So um, this will be stitched probably on some Monaco that I tea and coffee dye. I had to order some that was long enough. It's over 20 inches long, so, or wide. So I'm really glad that I took the time to get out my tape measure. <laughs> Just a reminder that that's so important because if I had started stitching that and finished a whole letter and then realized I wasn't going to have room, I would have, or even more, if I'd stitched, you know, three or four letters, I would have been devastated. So instead of that autumn that I hope to stitch at the end of the month in its place, I went ahead and started my own design that I'm working on. And I won't tell you what it's going to say all the way, but that's the charm I was telling you about that looks like, I think I said it's a watch, it's a clock. Um, but it's harder than it looks to design your own piece. The stitches have to all fit. That's why I went ahead and put that charm on because I wanted to make sure I had room. And um, it takes a lot more time. So just a way to find more respect for your designers and to um, support them any way you can because it's a lot of work. But I'm really anxious to see how that turns out. And um, there isn't a pattern to show you, so I hope to have it finished by the end of Mania so you can see the project because there is no picture yet. Um, on day 12, I worked on my whip of Brooks Books Wizard of Oz. I was still working on that scarecrow and I ran out of thread. I couldn't find the green thread and I ran out of the blue, so I didn't get him finished, but I did put some work on his face and I was able to use some Krynic and get that gold sparkly brick. And that's only my second attempt to stitch with Krynic. I used it with another thread of DMC. I'm not even sure if that's how you're supposed to do it, but it was fine. I had to go a little slow. I had one break one time, a, a strand break but it was a fun result. I made it a little shorter than it was supposed to be. I thought, okay, I'm done. <laughs> That's good enough. So that makes it super cute. And I have Dorothy um, as well, so I hope to pick that up probably when I start really getting into my Halloween stitching. Stitching. And speaking of Halloween stitching, this is what I worked on yesterday, the Cricut Collection Halloween Eve. And that's just a fun ring of trick-or-treaters a lot of which my kids had chosen for their costumes. So this is just a fun kid piece, kind of for Halloween, but I really liked it. It's not hard, even though it had a fractional stitch or two that I wasn't expecting. I was able to get that top of the moon and the fence almost done. That's the very top of the wheel. And this is the fabric that I dyed myself. I did do another wash of brown over it, trying to tone down the orange, and I really like this fabric. I think it turned out pretty good and everything's showing up so far on it. That's a classic Colorworks Queen Bee. Just a really pretty variegated yellow. So liking that stitch very much. And I was unable to start my start for today. I kept working on that moon as I was watching my husband. My sweet husband changed my teenage daughter's flat tire this morning. We had to go um, find her car that had been abandoned last night when she had a tire shred on her in construction. So grateful that she is okay. But as we all know, mania plans get interrupted with life and um, or mania interrupts life. I don't know which it is. But I will start this hopefully this afternoon and work on that barn some more and maybe get to the specialty row above the barn because I do enjoy doing those. So looking forward to working on this for the last of my week. And the other thing I wanted to share was a gift that I picked out for myself when I was at um, the Stitch Niche. I found a piece I think I had seen, maybe it was Michelle of Cozy Egg, I don't remember, um, this border on this piece called Birds of a Feather by With a Needle and Thread, Brenda Gervais, um, just really drew me in. I thought it was so pretty. This was some kind of mystery, like three part piece. I think that's part two, and I don't remember if I showed this. This is the final, yeah. It is called Birds of a Feather as well, as the piece I'm gonna show you next. So really happy to have that for Mother's Day. Not intending to start it anytime soon, but I'll have to have some whips clear out before I can put that in. It's not a huge piece, but it's really, really pretty. So I think it's out of print. Um, like I said, just a 
So then I stumbled upon it. Didn't think I'd ever see it again, so I went ahead and snatched, snatched it up. So that was from Stitch Niche. And I also picked up some threads at Stitch Niche for the piece I told you about last week called Birds of a Feather. I don't know what that title keeps popping up for, for me. Um, by Blackbird Design. And I have an exciting announcement about this piece. My um, friend on Instagram, Kim Goldman, and I were talking. Um, we had both snatched this up when we realized it was going to be going out of print. And so we had said, would you like to do a stitch along maybe in a couple months? And um, another friend, Becky from Socks for Mom, said, oh, I'd like to hop in too. So the three of us, Becky of Socks for Mom and Kim of Kim Goldman on Instagram, I'll link both of their channels below, are going to be starting this piece on July 13th. Um, that's a day that's special to me. So, and it's the middle of the summer after patriotic stitching is done, I thought it would be a good time. So if you are interested, if you already have this pattern in your stash, or if you picked it up last week when you realized it was going out of print, then um, just comment down below and let me know. And you can stitch along with us on July 13th. I'm changing the threads a little bit because they're kind of brighter than I would like. So I'm using more of like a, a country redwood and a very degree color, kind of more toned down than these brights. But I'm really excited about it. And I'm really happy to be working on it with Kim and Becky. Hopefully Becky and I can get together to work on it because we're both here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. So like I said, if you're interested, the hashtag is going to be capital B, capital B, capital D for Blackbird Design and then Bird Sal. And we um, called it that also because if you don't have this pattern or you're not interested in picking it up, if you have a Blackbird Design piece um, that includes a bird, then you're welcome to hop along and stitch on the Blackbird Design Bird Sal, BBD Bird Sal. And again, I'll link that all down below. So I'm excited about that. And a quick reminder, um, I forgot to say this last week, but I had done a giveaway on my April floss tube, floss tube number three. So if you missed that, um, I'll try to link the video in a card up in the corner. Um, I'd love for you to go back and leave a comment about your mania plans so that you can be considered to um, win that Brenda Gervais pattern that I'm giving away. And again, I forgot to mention too that the regular rules apply. You have to be over 18 to give your address and I'd like you to be a subscriber. And if you aren't subscribed, I'd love to have you as part of my stitching circle, as Daylene says, I'm so grateful. And um, I'd love to hear a comment from you if you are gonna be participating in the Sal or if you have had other successes or challenges on mania let me know thanks so much for watching and i'll see you next week